Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Sky coming on to talk to you about a very exciting topic which is going to be about the oncoming Jupiter and Saturn direct period that we are moving into. It feels like a long time coming as this previous three or four months of having Jupiter and Saturn retrograde has been um, very monotonous and difficult for a lot of people, but I am coming on to bring you some good news today that um, we are slowly on the downhill uh, side of that, and many planets are going direct. We have Jupiter and Saturn um, moving direct by October 18th, and then um, around that time Mercury will also go direct. And um, yeah, basically the transits are going to start loosening a lot and there's going to be a nice kind of exhalation and a nice sort of reconfiguring period of time. As that's one of the keywords coming up for me uh, as I'm preparing you for this oncoming period of time. Uh, one of the main reasons I'm making this video now, um, as I'm filming this video, it's October 7th, and that gives us about 10 or 11 days before the Jupiter and Saturn actually go direct. And I think that it's good to talk about it early because these retrogrades can really be illuminating for us uh, in the sense that what we don't want, what we never wanted for ourselves, the experiences that we couldn't plan for, the overworking, the workaholism, the uphill battle that a lot of people have faced over these last four months with, the, with this particular uh, series of retrogrades is a really great opportunity here in you know this week before the direct to journal about what we don't want to necessarily take from this time. And also to journal or to, well, it might not be journaling, it might be any type of, you know, thought process, but I recommend recording it in some way, whether it's through writing or through, you know, uh, dialogue with your phone recording app or something. I really recommend um, giving yourself an opportunity here to voice or record what you haven't really enjoyed about this time, what was more difficult than you thought it would be, what ended up being a problem that you didn't anticipate, and also uh, what results have you received during this time over the last three or four months that were very surprising in the context that you signed up for. You know how sometimes we don't always know exactly what we're signing up for. Sometimes we have this front-facing impression of what a certain goal or a certain commitment is. And then when, when we actually get involved in those things, uh, we can be surprised to see what that really looks like on the inside. You know, it's sort of like, um, you know, in a very industrialized, you know, time, we can maybe go to Walmart or go to some kind of store and get a nice product, but it's sometimes very shocking to see how the, those got there or what went on to um, allow us that experience of receiving that in a front-facing way. So what I'm trying to say is that I think to some degree over the last three to four months, there's been a very inside view, a very interior perspective. Um, and now having seen so many different layers of certain aspects of what we have involved ourselves in, we are going to have really about two or three weeks from now, by the time November hits, like beginning of November, a very poignant time to make some judgment calls, yes, some decisions, but more than that, more than just making changes or choosing to not participate or choosing to participate with something, we're gonna have a very keen understanding of what we are involved in or what it really brings. And I think we don't want to let this go to waste. It's already starting to come in, but not until Jupiter and Saturn go direct on um, the 18th of October, until they're both direct. Jupiter goes direct beforehand. I'll, I'll put the dates below in the description box if you guys want to see some um, exact numbers and info. But um, they're both direct by October 18th. And right during that period of time, again, right close to the cusp of Libra and Scorpio season, there will be a really poignant capability to just know uh, clearly what your results are and what that means regarding how you want to invest yourself in the future, okay? Um, so to me, this period of time, uh, really for the rest of the month of October and early November, 
feels like such a crucial, such a monumental time of decision making and momentum setting, though it is also a very karmic and resonant time. What I mean by this is while we have many freedoms and decisions to change or upend or redo or recreate whatever in our lives, at the same time, I feel that there's this really big push to continue certain momentums as well. So there's kind of an imbalance here that I can definitely diagnose energetically in this time where even though we know we might not be cut out for certain things or we know that we're not really placed perfectly, I'm sensing a very strong like uh, morale behind uh, many people to still commit and to still um, learn and grow through even inauthentic situations, which I don't consider to be a bad thing, but I think it's good food for thought. Like um, when is enough enough and when do we really actually want sizable transformation? You know, maybe it's not really indicated having so much, you know, Jupiter and Saturn being the fixed sign of Aquarius. It indicates innovation, but not necessarily transformation. And it's an interesting thing about innovation. Maybe it's not as transformative of a concept as we think it is. Maybe it really requires a lot of, um, you know, traditional means to affect itself, to create the catalyst experience of an innovation. So are we in an innovative experience or are we in a transformative experience? I think it's probably the first, okay, as I don't really see many people wanting to totally transform their experience. And even, and here's another little issue that I think is really good to think about. Trying to convince yourself that you need a huge change or that you need to totally shift a situation when in reality that shift is relying on the maintenance of much of a majority of what you put your time into. So this is kind of like the, the brain block of this time. This is at the end of this retrograde. So before the 18th of October, I'm sensing a lot of people like they're, it's just like a brain block. Like it's very difficult to really comprehend the totality of many of the situations that they've involved themselves in. And that's uh, making that makes sense. And I think that there's something in that, you know, not necessarily knowing the answer, not necessarily feeling secure in in your knowledge at this time seems to me to indicate a time of rest or a time of reflection and stillness. Okay, because I don't think that that's really the best mindset to be in and really upend or question or introduce a lot of uncontextual experiences with, you know, that confusion, that unsureness. So if you do have any amount of that confusion and unsureness about a new goal or about what you're currently involved in, I would really recommend it to maybe distance yourself a little bit from it in in whatever way that you're connecting to it in nine of in like nine of swords. So instead of taking action about a difficult circumstance or instead of making changes, we might really sit and try to process things during this time, especially in Libra season. We might really be trying to like go through so many details, like too complex of situations for our, for like one person to really have the outcome that they want with it. And I think that it's better to detach ourselves from these like overly stressful overly complex webs, okay? And let them be what they are. Just during this time, and yes, Scorpio season is gonna come in and Sag and Capricorn season, and it will be a more apt for change, especially as we go into an eclipse season at the end of November and Sagittarius season. You know, um, there are going to be a lot of changes that happen naturally without so much deliberate push, okay? So let's talk a little bit about deliberate push, about the diagnosing of a problem and then trying to change it with your own mind or with your own efforts, okay? And, you know, choosing to do it yourself instead of letting or allowing a natural resolution. That is something that's very prevalent right now. And um, I think that it's very evocative of the Saturn Uranus squares of this year. Of, the, of this year. Um, and I've got this written down in... Um, I guess I'll go ahead and touch on it, but this 
period of time where Jupiter and Saturn go direct at the end of October, this movement also catalyzes the reconfiguration of the Saturn Uranus square. So we're going to have about uh, a few weeks or a month actually um, where that's not super in. And I think that this is why, again, like distance and exhale and not trying to push that hard is good because natural resolutions really will uh, come through. But I have to really prepare you guys that this feeling of being in an uphill battle, this feeling of pushing against something and not getting results, or this feeling of frustrating, frustrating, grading, monotonous processing, decision-making actions, lots of back and forth, lots of you know running in circles, okay? Um, this is something that is not going to end if we can't allow natural flow into our lives. So natural endings, and I'm not really feeling that endings are a huge part of this uh, current energetic spectrum, but we interpret certain experiences as that, and that is a flaw of this time. Nothing with this energy is really having to like end or be taken or lost. And I think we might be making a lot of mistakes at this time and thinking like, I've either got to be all or nothing. I've either got to quit or continue committing 100%. And actually with the Saturn Uranus square uh, that has been really creating a lot of challenges for a lot of people, but these challenges are empowering, right? With Saturn and Uranus. Um, it's not trying to take anything away. It's not a transit that is a threat, but it does certainly create circumstances that are so frustrating that people in their frustration or in their desperation even can really do destructive things to their momentum. And that's where the problem area is with um, this current transit, is not worrying about the transit and in astrology we should never worry about the transit itself but there are certainly some transits that are a little bit more you know we worry about more than others but a saturn uranus square to me is not something so much to worry about when it comes to natural momentum when it comes to what happens without our own tampering but what i worry about with saturn uranus square is the tampering that is done or the attempt to like really control one's reality the attempt to innovate so hard to push things so hard to create uh, monumental um, results in life in a short period of time in like a short burst in a sprint that's what concerns me with the saturn uranus square that's where um, problems can be created and um, hassles debt um, you know even future autoimmune problems or some kind of stress disorder or some kind of um, financial chaos as well as I do probably uh, anticipate some financial chaos at the end of this year and around the calendar new year. Um, not so I'm not so much talking personally, but more so uh, at a more of a macro economic level. Okay, but of course that uh, also will have effects at the micro level. Um, but that is definitely indicated and I would try one one thing I, that I've been seeing a lot of success with um, for many people that I've talked with, is a starting to think about aspects of life that don't necessarily deal with money or don't necessarily deal with uh, control mechanisms and structures that don't necessarily deal with economics, okay? Or, I don't know, any type of rules or regulations or anything like that. Uh, there is a hyper-focus on those types of things during these types of transits, especially with Jupiter and Saturn being in the very political sign of Aquarius, political planets in the political sign. It creates a very apt likelihood for people to get so obsessed with these types of fields that they totally lose track of their own lives. Because there's definitely a kind of attention deficit thing with the Saturn Uranus square as well, especially having Mercury retrograde right now, having that debilitated Libra triple conjunction with uh, the Sun, Mars, and Mercury uh, over the month of October, preceding the last point of the Jupiter-Saturn retrograde. It says to me that people are um, almost in an indulgent way allowing themselves to be distracted from what they really need to focus on. Uh, so procrastination would be at a max with these transits. Um, 
any type of tendency towards um, lack of focus or uh, a tendency to compensate as well would, would be definitely at a <laughs> at a high high level and again this is why i'm recommending you know journaling recording what you don't like about this time how you what habits you're not really thinking are good for you what um time spending uh what worries how you might be losing sleep uh, what time of day you choose to think about you know problems of like business or finance or obligations or anything like that basically i'm trying to really get you guys ready for um an eventual reconfiguration of the Saturn Uranus square because it's not in right now. Here we can actually kind of do the best preparation. Okay, um, so this is ending up being a video just as much about Saturn Uranus square as it is uh, Jupiter and Saturn going direct. Uh, but why not? Why not? I mean, we're doing live premieres every Friday at um, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications and come to the live premieres. They're so fun. Join on Discord. We do updates there too. It's linked below. Um, anyway, so what I think, re relating this back to Jupiter Saturn going direct, this point um, from now until October 18th is a great time to basically prepare for the future and also to start thinking about the quality of your constant experiences. So something like, like I don't know, worrying about some kind of obligation you have over and over and over again and never finding a solution, never um, also choosing to relinquish the worry of it because there's no solution maybe and maybe that means it doesn't need to worry as well. Like choosing that in-between place. We've talked about that dreaded in-between place a lot um, over this year on this channel, that wavering energetic place where I've identified a problem and I'm worrying about it, but I'm not solving it either. And I'm um, also not allowing myself to detach from the problem. So it's a very difficult time. That's also Saturn Uranus. Uh, it does that too. It, basically anything that one would be focused on right now or anything that one was too worried about or too focused on, uh, too productive with, would kind of evoke this type of feeling of like love-hate relationship like you might have made a business or you might have a career or even a relationship where it's like this is everything to me this is my life's work this is my soul's creation but I'm also terribly concerned about it and I don't trust it and I'm afraid I've not done it correctly and um, I lose sleep over thinking about all of the potential uh, difficulties that could arise, that wavering thing. But at the same time, this is one of the best things I've ever done. This is one of the most incredible creations. What is the solution to this? This probably is not going to totally become apparent until after the Saturn Uranus squares conclude. But um, as we've already kind of gotten introduced to it, I can say for sure it deals with um, trust, okay? It deals with trust of momentum, trust of the natural chain of events. It also deals with impulsivity to a degree and trying to do too many things. Uh, one psychic image I've gotten very recently, I don't know what, what this type of performance is called, but you know where they like hold the sticks and the sticks have plates on them and they're like spinning around and they have like multiple sticks like that. I, I don't know if I'm describing that right. Maybe I'll find a way to get an image on the screen of what I'm talking about, but that's kind of Saturn Uranus square two and uh, Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius both because they're in right Uranus's sign so it takes it to the next level of Saturn Uranus energy and it's very powerful you know that square that combination of energy it it um, tends to signify some type of concentration of you know very powerful very strong energy but because of that it kind of can overflow or there's something like really like to hold that, to bear that, to be with that as one person can be very uh, difficult. And I think that everyone can relate to that in some way. There's some aspect of many people's lives that is overwhelming to them at this point, or they're like, how do I carry this? How do I, how do I adapt this to what it needs to be now? Okay, as we've also had that big shift in paradigm, that big generational shift also happening alongside these transits of what is going to be, you know, a good way to live or seen as a sort of 
I don't know, like group think type of positive life experience, that's changing right now as well. So there's not really a way to predict it, is it? There's not really a way to do anything perfectly right now, is there? There's not really a way to um, give ourselves some type of non-human experience, right? Because I think that a part of being human is that uh, lack of guarantee, is that lack of perfection, is that lack of total assurance. So here I think might be one of the main aspects of Jupiter and Saturn going direct is maybe a bit of a philosophical change like, okay, I can do what I have come to the conclusion will be good for these situations, but then also I have to maybe develop at this time a um, relinquishing capacity or an ability to also let the universe work in tandem with this to not feel as if I have to control every aspect of my life, okay? Um, because that is also going to become very stale, okay, with Jupiter and Saturn going direct in Aquarius. It kind of wants some type of change. It kind of wants some type of real progress in the lives of most people. Um, okay, um, and another thing I've written down while we're talking about the intuitive messages of this uh, general time and, and Jupiter and Saturn preparing to go direct is uh, the word presentation. Okay, so how we present things, how we, um, I'm not just talking about appearances, I'm not just talking about projection here, but I'm talking also about the context in which we present a problem like in our mind or um, the way that we present certain information feels very important at this time and definitive. The Jupiter, Saturn, and Aquarius uh, direct energy sometimes actually is more about the way something is presented than what it actually is. There's a bit of marketing in that energy. There's a bit of front-facing, the, the front-facing component being different than the content. So with that, yeah, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for um, deceit also with this transit. But what's really positive about it and a more healthy expression of it is not, you know, to try to deceive, but rather to start to present your problems to yourself in a more solvable way, okay? I'm seeing a lot of people before Jupiter and Saturn go direct presenting certain problems in their lives to themselves, thinking about it, processing it, and the way it's presented is, is as if it's some kind of insolvable Mount Everest, when in reality it may be a very kind of um, tiny, 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 very easily solvable problem. And I think that the presentation or the exaggeration of certain problems is a huge downfall. And it's just almost like a lot of people um, don't really want a problem-free experience or don't want to um, be bored or lack some type of huge existential like crisis or something, you know? And I think that's why it's so harsh uh, because the Aquarius energy it does not favor that type of emotional heaviness. It's a very emotionally detached sign. So um, I think the presentation of any huge emotional turmoil at this time or any type of like, you know, I've never been able to do this because this was taken from me during this many, many years ago or any type of like, this is an unsolvable crisis and I can't leave, I can't get out of it. Um, these types of existential like quandaries are something that won't be solved with this energy. So it's like, do we want to focus on that? Do we want to spend all of our any energy on that? Or can it be presented in more real ways? So say that like, I don't know, I say say one feels that they cannot escape some type of emotional turmoil. It's very broad. It's very arbitrary, isn't it? What's the actual problem? Okay. Um, within that emotional turmoil, is it because of like where one lives? Is it because of the relationship that one keeps? Is it because of... Um, miscommunication or something like that. It's really got to get specified and then specified further. So say it's like miscommunication, it's got to then be like, okay, when does it happen? What leads up to it? What am I doing wrong? What is this other person doing wrong? And then within that, it has to get like specific to a point of like, is it fixable? Like, is there, and, and you should be able to see very objectively. This is the great thing about Aquarius energy is it shows things very honestly and objectively if you choose to see it that way. Um, so, 
it's a, a good kind of allegory to it is imagine you've gone to a store and you're at the front counter of the store and you can also see the back of the store at the same time you can see like the factory line you can see everything moving um, and it's almost like a part of the brand like it's like oh cool wow well, you know how like some breweries breweries i think have like the actual as like part of their marketing like you see like how it's all made at the same time that's a good psychic allegory for this period of time you can really see the nuts and bolts of things and with that view of the nuts and bolts of experiences you can really make big choices and maybe maybe they don't need to be acted upon unless you are really ready for those changes but do you see what i'm getting at here where it's like these huge existential quandaries that are undefined and like wear us out make us tired drain us because they're so big they're so like ugh, you know it's like sluggish it's um uh, it shouldn't be like that at this point in time. It should be very specific, like what the problem is. And I do think that those changes can actually be made here. And it's surprising, actually, how much security, um, at least concentrated to this period of time, you know, the rest of October and even early November, how secure and uh, nice that can feel. Because underneath all of these sort of um, pointy energies that are coming through right now is uh, some really nice, comfortable incredible progressions and nice rewards as well. And that's actually going to segue me into the astrology portion of the video. Um, so we'll check out some charts. Um, yeah, we have Venus now having moved into Sagittarius, you know, which is indicating that there are rewards to be received at this time. Venus loves to be in Sagittarius. It's one of its favorite signs. Um, I would argue that it's a, actually a bit of an exaltation for Venus. It's not technically, it's not traditionally an exaltation, but because uh, Venus and Jupiter traditionally are such a wonderful combination, uh, Sagittarius being Jupiter's sign, um, this is a really uh, nice, rewarding uh, period of time for a lot of people. And because of that, I think that one of the best ways to work with this period of time in general, energetically preparing for uh, Jupiter and Saturn to go direct, is to reward yourself, okay, with a peaceful mind, really. Uh, things are the way that they are. A lot of us have made our beds at this point in time, and there's always room for change. You know, we can always get out of those beds and go somewhere else, but I don't think that that's indicated uh, really for a lot of people right now, unless obviously it's been planned for a long time. But the entire transit of Venus and Sag indicates a reward. It indicates a good karma. It indicates, especially if it hits something in your chart, you know, that you have a really nice um, karmic blessing during this time of the year. And by now the uh, chart for October 18th should be on the screen. Um, I really like it. Okay, I really like what is at least um, loosening at this time and the knots that come undone to some degree. What's really beautiful to me is that Venus is at the midpoint by sextile to Jupiter and Saturn. So it's actually uh, making a beautiful angle to Jupiter and Saturn right as they go direct. Venus is direct. Mercury has gone direct, um, getting right to the tail end of Libra season at that time. Uh, the nodes are also moving towards the cusp of Sagittarius and Scorpio, which is kind of crazy. Um, but I think for many people, there's a blessing of knowing what you truly want, okay? That sort of friction-based indecision process that a lot of 2021 has been for a lot of people. Like I saw basically a lot of people like getting flashes of like their sole purpose and like these huge like monolithic dreams, you know? Um, and then also being like, well, I need time to think about if that's really right for me. What I think this period of time is these two planets go direct. Again, whenever Jupiter and Saturn are in the same sign, it's creating a 20 year cycle, you know? Um, so that to me at its highest level deals with, you know, what is a one of one at least of the sole purposes that we have um, for a lifetime and i think with venus at the midpoint sextile to them there's going to be a nice receiving okay of that higher purpose what is kind of confusing to me about the chart though with sun and mars still debilitated in libra with the moon conjunct or retrograde uranus uh, with the uh, luckily mars chiron opposition having broken up but mercury now being in opposition there, um, not nearly as difficult as the Mars Chiron opposition though. Um, will we give it to ourselves? And 
at what point in time do we give it to ourselves, okay? Um, there's a really important sort of energy of prayer that I feel with this and also an energy of the universe proving us wrong and that being a great thing. So a certain worry falls flat, a certain preconceived mental erraticism distills, a certain forced incompatibility with our own purpose fizzles away and something then naturally locks back into place. So this is a light bulb moment for some people. Um, and because of the Chiron Mercury opposition, this is actually like a huge realization point, a huge revelation and the natural reception of the Venus sextile to the Jupiter Saturn, just having moved direct in Aquarius. This is an aha moment. If I've ever seen an aha moment around the time of October 18th, but it's probably not going to come in the most conventional methods. So I don't want you guys to like, you know, try to push for it too hard because it's going to come one way or another, but it might come in an unconventional way, right? With Jupiter and Saturn being in Uranus sign of Aquarius, Venus being in Jupiter sign. There's actually something funny, humorous, and comical, okay, about the energy. So can we laugh some of this stuff off? Can we also be grateful for some of these huge insights, some of these huge flashes that we could have never seen for ourselves, that we could have never imagined, that we would even conceive of? And it's like, wow, look at how far you've come to have these types of uh, conceptions, to have these types of even quandaries. Like some of these are quandaries of benevolence, right? Like in a previous phase of your life, you might have never had a quandary like this because there were too many problems and there were too many um, short-term little minutia, short-term flotsam and jetsam, shall we say, um, to allow you to even perceive what you're perceiving now, but because we're maybe not accustomed to it, because we've always been so used to uh, having all of these like problems to deal with that are so myopic and so short-term that we never really make the large real progress that we need in our lives, that's out of the way. That's kind of like that melts away with this transit, in fact. And real progress does start to escalate here. Something starts to snowball. Something starts to build. So I want you all to think about that. And I want if you get the chance and if it's right for you to think about what you're ready to build and what path you might be uh, ready to step on here. Because uh, leading up to it, I do feel that it's pretty erratic, like with the Mercury retrograde with um, most of the transits, it's evocative to me of like squirrel, squirrel mentality. Like, you know, they, they run back and forth and it's, um, what the solution to that is, is that just a transitory thing that we naturally come out of? Or do we need to really implement some type of, again, deliberate type of push to move away from that? I'm not sure. I think that that depends on the person. And I think it's also really resting on getting onto the other side of the Saturn Uranus uh, transit, okay? Um, and that's not going to be for quite a ways, uh, you know, into 2022. So all that we can do, if we kind of know about that, if we kind of know that there's going to be a tendency to maybe have polarity within especially like status quo types of considerations. Like, should I work here? Should I work there? Should I buy this? Should I sell that? Should I do this type of business or that type of business? Stuff like that is um, not an easy territory to be in. It's much more favorable to be reaping the favorable outcome of something that you built before this whole Saturn Uranus uh, transit stuff came through. Um, so for those of you tempted to really, um, again, change the game or to follow through on some of these erratic jumping around thoughts, I would make sure that it's well prepared. And I think that the time timeline of from like 2020, even until now has taught us that over and over again, you know, jumping too quick, pushing things through too fast, having a sense of desperation about one's decision-making process and, then creating a lot of um, worry in the future. So does that mean that there's like regression during this time? Does that mean that there's a pulling back into a previous, more comfortable place? I think that it's in a way neither here nor there because what we have in this very moment, what we've created is a, one of the most viable 
okay, ways to continue moving. You know, it's not that what is here is wrong for anybody, I don't think, uh, completely wrong, but it's a little bit like erratic, and, it, and it's that's the word that keeps coming up, and it's also hasty. There's something hasty, there's something erratic, there's something overstimulated, there's something lacking in grounding about the way that energy flows right now. And that's because of Saturn Uranus square. That's because of Jupiter and Saturn being in Uranus's sign. And I think that because of that, it's one of the most empowering things that you can have is a nice itinerary, okay? One of the most empowering things that you can have is a well-formulated list or a well well postured schedule of events and also a de-escalation of some kind with a certain type of really erratic energy so minimizing to some degree but further than minimizing it's not just about getting rid of like clutter in your house it's not just about simple things we've come past that past virgo season there might be a few unnecessary habitual actions for a lot of people with this that are way more contributive than we might like to consider to this kind of erraticism. And this might even be at the level of like brain chemistry, you know, like the role that dopamine plays in uh, clarity of mind and how certain habitual actions or certain um, patterns affect that. So I would definitely, I, one of the best things I could recommend for anyone right now to do in a very sober way, so we're not talking about going crazy and like um, doing all kinds of strange health things, but um, any type of brain healing or any type of like, I, I think I've heard of like dopamine detox or stuff like that, like where basically you really work to give yourself a nice calm and... Um, healing experience. Of course, I'm not any type of medical practitioner. Definitely talk to your doctor before you do any type of health-related thing. Again, these videos are entertainment videos, but um, I'm interested in this myself, and I just wanted to say like, I'm interested in looking into healing like a attention deficit tendency or healing over erratic mind and um, what types of, you know, healthy, non-like... Um, non-fad type of things we can implement, you know, like celery juice, like apple cider vinegar, these things I stand by, Th things that are safe. I don't, I really disdain certain like fad health treatments where people are like, yeah, fast for like a whole week and then like make a trip to the sacred oasis of, you know, the Nevada desert after your week long fast and like stand on your head and I don't know, like start some type of supplement regimen or something. I don't like things like that. I think I, I, I don't, you know, I'm trying to be funny here, but the neurological system, the nervous system would very easily be taxed by these astrological transits. Uh, anything electric might be nice to have less time with from screens to phones to whatever. And maybe this means really developing a much more grounded routine, maybe new exercise regimens, any type of training, any type of endurance is really good to build here. Because I also feel that there's a general lack in core for a lot of people because things are so in the high brain, in the um, like frontal cortex, in the um, very conscious mind. It's leading people to be so airy, to be so Aquarian, to be so Uranian that it's very easy to like develop a tremor at this time or it's very easy also to, I don't know, any, some type of autoimmune disease can very easily come up with, with this period because I don't think that people have a strong tendency innately to focus on the health of their body. They have to really choose it at this time. And those who do choose it, I think, will get really good rewards. And that, I think, is the, one of the only recommendations I can make about changes to make for some people is a more body-focused, more grounded, less electrical, erratic, squirrel-like experience and more of a 
fox or a bear, like if I'm thinking animal totems, uh, which I don't talk too much about on this channel. I'm very intrigued. I'm not the hugest expert on animal totems, but um, more grounded totems, like uh, instead of squirrel, instead of like, I don't know, wasp or something. I'm feeling so buzzy. The energy is so buzzy. It buzzes around um, instead of like locust or um, anything like that. They need those like buzzing, buzzing creatures. That's very prevalent right now. Try to think in terms, uh, maybe even like turtles or like tortoise or some type of slower moving, some type of grounded, more methodical animal totem structure. You know, if you're into animal totems, if you're not into animal totems, again, those are just like allegories to um, give an example. Anything in your life that has a more of a methodical approach and is not so overwhelming and crazily presented and uh, polarized in nature, okay? It's really good to let things be downhill now. It's really good to decompress, to trust the process, to trust in the tandem of the universe, to trust in Something that deals maybe a little bit less with your own deliberate action because we've had a lot of deliberate push. I'm feeling, and this is something that I feel psychically more than anything, is that there's something very pushed and pushy about this time. Like I'm feeling people really digging in, really like up against something heavy. And yes, in numbers, that can create a big result and it is creating a big result. And we can see some of those big results that it's creating on a macro level. But... It's got a kind of ebb and flow. And now I can say that as we build up to Jupiter and Saturn going direct, we have to maybe start to prepare to receive more instead of pushing. You know, Venus being sextile to the midpoint of this uh, configuration. There are great rewards for a slightly more passive outlook on the situation coming in um, that we're leading up to, especially if you're someone who's put in a million percent effort and push really hard just to find yourself still struggling to process the entirety of what you did or what you've like chosen to um, create for yourself. That's the thing about being so pushy. There are times for it. I mean, humans are kind of built to push in a way. It's kind of an innate part of the human experience to obviously not just, you know, remain in the elements indefinitely. And sure, arguably, even leading up to the period of time that it goes direct, so between now and October 18th, there's still a chance for pushing there. Like maybe something does need to still be pushed through, or maybe there needs to be some type of, you know, final combinative effort to solidify some type of strength. Um, and that that's recommendable to a degree. I can definitely recommend like setting yourself up, okay, to coast, setting yourself up to be on the brink of these huge soul discoveries or not soul discoveries. It's more like um, discoveries of personal truth or discoveries of essence of oneself at a higher level. Like these things need to be given a space that is not so pushed and not so manufactured and not so tampered with in order to be processed properly. That's the best thing I've said in this video. That's, that's, the most important part of this video. We've been pushing, we've been um, manufacturing, we've been going so hard at things for a lot of this year that it's hard to then not have the essence that we actually need be colored by that experience. And one way that we can start to actually reap the benefits of what we've done and also how we need to evolve is to kind of set ourselves up to be somewhat calm, somewhat relaxed, and uh, enjoying of how we output and what we're creating. Um, because the Jupiter, Saturn direct in Aquarius will likely innovate our lives and it will likely show us what we're meant to do, who we're meant to be, and how that comes about. And that's what I'm most interested in, in this oncoming phase, is that last part, how it materializes how it actually comes into the reality because there's been a big split that I've noticed like people kind of know what they want or they have a very good idea of how they would like their lives to look but they're still it's still like a dream like it's not actually manifested for a lot of people 
And I do think that this particular direct will at least start to give us an idea of um, how we could connect the dots. And then I think that we have to choose to do it too. I think a lot of people don't necessarily trust it or they also really like what they have or the safety of what they currently have and are unwilling to risk by making a big change. And it makes sense, you know, Jupiter will not go retrograde again in Aquarius. Um, It's now going to go back to Pisces and, you know, um, let's see if I can find a date for you all. Um, I'm just animating the chart. Yeah, by the calendar new year, even by the end of 2021, uh, Jupiter's back in Pisces and it won't be in Aquarius anymore. Saturn is not even halfway through the sign yet, though, at that period of time. Um, so I will say that this direct, so that's only going to last from like October 18th till, I don't know, December 29th-ish, something like that. That Jupiter direct in Aquarius is a really vital time to at least start to process and understand your true purpose to some degree and that's a kind of a difficult term true purpose you know but that's that's as best as i'm going to put it um because there is a big crisis of people seeming to be involved in things that they don't like and not allowing themselves out of it Uh, and i do think that this transit deals a lot with that and a lot with the choices around that And, and it might not be until saturn gets out of aquarius that the changes or the actual progress has been made real, but it would make sense that as Saturn's getting to the halfway point and getting up to like the second and third decan of Aquarius, that those would really start to come into place. In conclusion, okay, uh, to really push through what I think (laughs) the thesis of this video is, um, you're on the verge of some type of mastery and you're also um, at very likely the ending point of some kind of bridge. And it's hard to navigate and it's also hard to commit to changes at this time though it feels that those are sort of like coalescing in the distance i think that the key is to accept what is here at this time and to um, not act on impulse or erraticism but rather to continue mastering what you are on the verge of mastery with and to basically allow what has been built what has carried you what has worked well to continue because there it, one dangerous component of this time is the uh, sort of faulty destructive tendency or a tendency to um, scrap something that is perfectly contributive to uh, where you need to be. Okay, um, so I would say no sudden movements. Okay, after these planets go direct, unless you've not done any. Okay, it depends on context. It depends on the momentum. Like if you've not made any changes over like 2020 and 2021, and it's been very solid, very regimented and very routine, I think that the Jupiter Saturn direct would indicate a natural evolution and a natural change. However, if you've been really pushing up against a wall, if you've been really um, lifting and carrying heavy weights and trying to make change after change after change, this Jupiter Saturn direct indicates uh, more of a stillness and more of an allowing of a different kind of evolution, of a different kind of... um, a different kind of solidity of self grounding of the mind and acceptance of momentum, acceptance of natural progressions. So on that note, everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this video. We got to talk for almost an hour about Jupiter and Saturn preparing to go direct. And we got to hold space uh, in community during the live premiere. So if you guys didn't get to check out the live premiere, again, I'm doing them here on YouTube every Friday, 6 p.m. PST, Uh, 8 p.m. Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications. Um, And thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and comment below. Let me know how it resonated. Uh, Below in the description box, I have quite a few helpful links. Uh, If you wanted to get bonus content on Patreon, I do weekly forecasts every Saturday over there that are only available over there. So be sure to check it out. And uh, yes, I will see you next week for another premiere. Have a wonderful time of preparation for uh, at long last Jupiter and Saturn going direct in Aquarius. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Much love. Bye.